Hello, I'm Pastor Keith Mazingo of Metropolitan Community Church of Baton Rouge. I want to thank you for clicking on the video of our worship message. Please go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mccbr to see the entire worship service, including prayers, special music, and communion. You're also welcome to join us every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for worship service. Stay tuned after the message for information on how you can stay in touch with us. For those of us who are musicians, that just makes me want to grab some palms and wave. Amen. That's good stuff right there. It is Palm Sunday, but let me ask you a few things. Let me ask you about a few people. Anybody ever heard of Martin Luther King? Pretty good soul. Did a little work on earth before his time was up. Did a lot for us. A lot for a lot of people in this room. Anybody ever heard of Harvey Milk? Mm. Did a lot of good in his time on earth too. Did a lot for a lot of us in this room. How about Troy Perry? You ever heard of him? Founder of our denomination. He's still with us. Did a lot of work. If you haven't seen the movie Call Me Troy, you need to see it. It will open your eyes to our roots and where we have come from and where we are continually heading. Some of you have heard of one of my best friends, Daryl Mitchell. You hear me talk about my prayer partner, Carol, her twin brother, Daryl, that was one of my close friends. That, if you knew about his life, you would definitely remember him. And if you ever heard him play the piano, you would definitely remember it. Who was killed helping someone trying to move out of a really bad neighborhood. You ever heard of Brandilyn Deer and her partner Susan? Uh-huh, we've heard of those people. Doing a lot of justice work in Mississippi. Anybody heard of Tom Merrill? We've heard of Tom, huh? Doing a lot for this community through MCC and Pride Fest and Crew of Apollo and all sorts of things. Is there a piece of pie he doesn't have his finger in in this town? Anybody heard of Morris Welch? Does a lot of justice work in this city for us. He's not afraid to go deal with the big folks down at the courthouse and stand up for our rights and be our voice. Amen. We thank them for doing that. Anybody heard of Jesus? Oh, we've heard of Jesus. He did a little bit too while he was here. Just a little. Here's the thing. I want to ask you, knowing all of these people that some have passed, some are martyrs, some were tortured, some have been shunned by family and friends and churches and lost credentials and lost jobs and lost time and lost battles, would they do it all again if they could? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, you'll, you can go, we obviously can't ask the ones that have passed on to glory, but we can ask the ones that are around, and I suspect if you ask them, it depends on which day you ask them. Because I bet there are some days they would say, mm, no, I don't think I want to go do that again. But the truth of the matter is, you all answered right, they really would. You know why? Because there's something inside. There's a calling inside. There's a high calling inside. Now I just named some names. I could have gone around the room and called your name too. And if I'd have done that, I would ask you the same question. Would you do it all again? Knowing that you have touched someone's life. 
even if it was one person, even if it was one person that you had made their life better, or they could say, as we do sometimes at people's funerals, this person made my life richer. This person made my life better. I'm a better person because I knew that person. I would say to you that most of us, no matter what we've gone through, would say yes. Maybe there's some that wouldn't, but most of us, I think, would say I'd have started sooner if I had known what I know now. I would have. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday. Look, and as Farron says, yes, we thank Brother Robert for doing all of the, all of this. And you, did you have helpers or did you do all of the de decor? He did it all. He's been saving. He he didn't prune. He's been waiting to prune for Palm Sunday. He said, "Now, I, do you want me to wait?" I'm all yes. He said, well, please wait. We love our palms. We love the way he does our palms every year. So we thank you, Brother Robert. It is beautiful. It's the day we celebrate. It's the entrance into Jerusalem of Jesus on his final venture on earth. It is the beginning in the church world of Holy Week. Because next Sunday is Easter, but before we get there, there's a lot of stuff we commemorate along the way. And I was thinking when they selected the movie for movie night, I was like, oh my God, do we really want to watch that during Holy Week? Is that a appropriate and then I thought it's about bullying of course it's appropriate it's about bullying it's about injustice it's about going after someone that should not be gone after and look at this week what it represents that Jesus Jesus was bullied Jesus was beaten Jesus was hung on a cross, and we look at that. Jesus was going to Jerusalem knowing that it was a big risk because the last few times he's been to Jerusalem, he had to run away from Jerusalem to escape death because the church folks were after him and the political folks were after him. Because too many people were following him and saying, we want him to be our king. We want him to lead us. We want him over us. You don't think it can divide up in political? <laughs> if you don't think there can be some division in political parties, you don't live in America. If you don't think there can be someone that nobody thinks can rise up to the top, you don't live in America because it happens with us. So Jesus knows he's going to Jerusalem, but there's a big risk. He knows he may and he probably will be arrested or bullied or beaten or maybe even killed. Because what if he can't escape this time? According to the scripture Brother Farron read to us today, he tells the disciples to go get him a colt. And he rides in unassumingly. And yet, when people figure out who that is, they start cheering, they start pulling palm leaves, they start throwing them down on the ground, they start waving them and praising him and saying, look, it's Jesus. He's the one. And other people come up and say, what's all this hoopla about? What are y'all, who's this, is this the second line parade that's just popped up out of somewhere? Because that's really what it was. It wasn't a planned thing. It just happened. It just arose. And you know how that happens. I think Louisianans can identify with this scenario more than any other state. Because let a parade pop up in front of you, and a lot of times you get all involved in the celebration too, and you may not even know what it's about. And it could be a celebration at a funeral or a wedding 
for a bar mitzvah. It could be a baby. It could be, oh, we just are happy today. Let's just get out here and do something. And people just join in. Jesus has a crowd gathering around him. Have you ever wondered what is going through Jesus' mind besides the risk? And I, I'm thinking, if I'm going into a dangerous situation, the last thing I want to do is call attention to me. Right? And yet, the crowd is growing. The crowd is getting louder. They're getting more rambunctious. Jesus is probably thinking, oh Lord, I'm going to get caught any moment now. And as the crowd gathers, he can't get out. Here he is on a cult. There are enemies all around. He knows there are spies out looking for him. Maybe he's thinking he has to do the right thing even though it may be his last thing. Maybe he's wondering if I had this to go over all again. Would I do it? The same question I ask you. Maybe he's wondering if it has been worth it, if it was worth giving up his life for. But then he starts looking through the crowd. And I don't think until now, this week, I ever even considered who was in the crowd. It was obviously people that wanted to praise him or that knew him or knew about him or knew about his works. So perhaps as he rode along, he saw somebody. Maybe he saw Mary and Martha, his good friends, that were so hospitable and had fed him a medium meal. Maybe he saw Lazarus that he had just recently raised from the dead, but wept at his tomb. He loved him that much. Maybe he saw a couple there that were celebrating their third anniversary. You know the couple at the wedding in Cana that Jesus turned water into wine when their wine got low. But they remembered. And maybe he saw them in the crowd there celebrating their third anniversary. rides on a little bit more. Maybe he sees blind Bartimaeus that he's healed. You know, the one that was blind from birth and the people wanted to know who had sinned and caused his blindness. Preached about that a few weeks ago. And maybe there's Bartimaeus just yelling and screaming, Thank you, Jesus, I can still see. It really is a miracle. I'm looking at you, Jesus. I haven't seen anything my whole life, and I'm looking at you. Maybe he saw that Samaritan water that he met at the well and asked her to draw him some water and then told her to go tell her husband that he had some water that he could give her that she'd never thirst again. Ah. Huh. Maybe, maybe he saw Mary Magdalene who had been delivered from all sorts of evil spirits and was in her right mind. Maybe she was leading the charge, throwing those palms, waving those palms and saying, thank you, Jesus, I'm still delivered. Anybody feeling anything? Maybe. He saw ten lepers that had been healed and were no longer lepers. People that were, other people were afraid to get near or to touch and Jesus wasn't afraid at all. He just said, go and be healed. And they were healed. Maybe he saw one of the disciples' mother-in-law that he had healed in her house. They thought she was gone, but he healed her. 
And she got up and started cooking and waiting on them, it says. He rides on a little farther. Was it worth it, Jesus? Was it worth it? If you had it to do over again, would you do it? Is it worth this risk? And maybe he sees that woman that was caught in the act of adultery. Remember her? She was about to get stoned to death by the community. And Jesus stopped them. He saved her life. He didn't just save her soul. He saved her life. Her very life. He said, let the one that's without sin cast the first stone. Maybe he saw the man that had been paralyzed. Remember the one that his friends cut a hole in the roof where Jesus was having church? And they lowered him down on ropes right in front of the altar. And Jesus not only healed him, but said, your sins are forgiven. And he jumped up and started running around. Maybe he was out there still leaping around saying, look, look, Jesus, I'm still walking. Hello, I still got my legs. I'm not paralyzed anymore because you healed me. Hmm. Was it worth it, Jesus? Was it worth it? Would you still do it? Would you put yourself at risk? Oh, I bet there were some more folks in that crowd. I bet some of those 5,000 people that Jesus fed with two loaves, with five loaves and two fishes were in there. I bet they were saying, he fed me when I was hungry. I mean literal food. I don't mean spiritual food. He fed me with literal food. He gave me food when I was hungry. Maybe he saw a young man screaming, Hey, Jesus, remember me? The first time you saw me, I was dead. And on the way to the cemetery. And here's my mama. Remember her? She was weeping beside of me. That you said, you asked her what she was crying about, and she said she had lost me, her only son, her only means of support. Won't you know we're doing fine financially, Jesus, because you raised me up from the dead, and we didn't have to go all the way to the cemetery that day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe in that crowd, I like this one, maybe in that crowd he saw the centurion. Uh oh. The centurion. Uh oh. The political folks, the war folks are here. Is he here to get me? He's Jesus. He says, Oh, no, no, no. Remember me, Jesus? You're the one that healed my little boyfriend. <laughs> my boyfriend. You healed my boyfriend. I wasn't even worthy enough for you to come to my house, and I just told you to speak the word, and he would be healed, and he was. I'm the one you said, Jesus, that you had never seen that kind of faith in all of Israel. And I'm here to tell you he's still well and we're doing great. Thank you for healing my boyfriend, Jesus. Maybe he's asking, Lord, I don't know. This is a lot of good stuff here. This is a lot of good It was. Is it worth the risk? Would I do it all over again? And then he sees her. He sees the woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years and had tried every doctor and could not get cured. Couldn't get cured, had done everything she knew to do. Had spent all of her money. How many of us know you can spend all your money on medical bills? You can. But she pressed her way on into the crowd. She pressed on and through that crowd to get to Jesus and said, I got one more try. I can't hurt. People said, what you doing? You need to get back. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. There's nothing, nothing. He doesn't need to be bothered with you. You're a woman. And you got woman problems. Jesus does not need to be bothered with you. Yet she pressed on and she pressed through and probably failed to get hold of the hem of his garment. And 
when she touched his garment, the scripture says she was made 100% whole. She didn't have any issues anymore. Her issues went right out the window. Oh, I bet when Jesus saw, saw her, he said, well, she pressed her way on and she pressed her way through. I'm going to do it too. I'm going to press my way on into Jerusalem. If they catch me, they catch me. If they kill me, they kill me. If I end up being dead, then I end up being dead. And he did. It cost him his life. Was it worth it, Jesus? Oh, yes, it was. It absolutely was worth it. When these folks saw, when he saw these folks, he knew it was worth the risk. He knew it was worth whatever price he had to pay to fight for all of us. You see, it wasn't just those people. Word of mouth, word of mouth, word of mouth. Writers, writers, writers. 2,000 years later, we're still telling the stories. We're still praising God with those people that have been healed and resurrected today who pressed their way in and pressed their way through. There's an old song that says everywhere Jesus went, he was doing good. In the second reading today, the Apostle Paul says to press toward the mark. He tells us, press toward the mark. You press on, you press through to the mark of the high calling of God in your life. What has God called you to do? Because you see, each one of us has a calling. Are we pressing on even when there are those days we don't feel like pressing anymore? On those days we ask ourselves, is it worth the risk? Is it worth this? When Sister Susan in Hattiesburg this week got on the front page of the newspaper for standing up for people's rights, standing up for our rights, her family called her and said, if you're going to do that, you cannot be our family anymore. We're ashamed of you. You know that had to hurt. It had to be like a dagger in her spirit to know she was doing the right thing at great risk of loss. I bet there, in, there may have been I, should, I shouldn't say there was because I don't know. I haven't talked to her. But, I, but I, does it make you wonder if there were at least a few moments that she wondered, is it worth it? Do I have to lose my whole family? Do I have to lose those that have been supportive of me? Those who have welcomed my wife into their home. But this is over the line. They can't handle this. Can't handle it. But I bet if she did have those questions, they didn't last very long. Because <laughs> I guarantee you, you let one of those church folks right now, today, be in need. She'll get on the front page of every newspaper she can to help them. Maybe her family will come around. I've seen it. Some of your families have come around, haven't they? Mm-hmm. Some of them haven't. Some of them have. I was thinking about Ray and Presley's wedding. All those family members that just kept piling in. And one of them came up to me because they had a big dance afterwards and I got out and danced a little bit myself. I did. I had on my clergy collar, you know. And one of, I can't remember one of y'all's relatives, I can't remember which one it was, one of them came up to me and said, this day, has just opened my mind to all sorts of things. They were there, number one. So I knew they loved them. I knew they loved Ray and Presley. They may have come in with a few questions. But they were leaving quickly because they saw love in that place and they saw piles of church folks loving on them and wishing them well. And they saw the preacher cutting a rug. <laughs> And one of them said to me, when, when they said that, they said, oh, by the way, 
You're opening our eyes to all sorts of things about ministers we didn't know either. I said, well, it's time for you to come out of the closet. Okay, maybe I wasn't quite that poor. But my spirit said that. I wanted to wave a palm at him. Say, it's time for us to go down that road together. It's time for us to ride on in. It's time for us to take that risk. And on those days that we may not think it's worth it to let that be a fleeting moment because we have the high calling of God in us. We know we do. We know we're going to stand for the right thing when we're pushed to it, even if it costs us our very lives. Amen. I can do a lot by myself, but I can do a lot more with you. And we in Baton Rouge can do a lot more with MCCs around the world and those we partner with and those who partner with us because it's not so much about the name, it's about the calling. It's about the experience. It's about riding in this parade together and having everybody join us as we go and wave the palms too. Some of them not even knowing what they're excited about. But catching that same excitement that we have. I'm so glad to be a part of a group that understands that we're not going to let injustice happen over and over without saying something, without doing something. We've lost a few church members, by the way, because they said, you too political? We have. Of course, now, you know, here's what I'm going to say about that. I'm going to pray for them because I'm fighting for their rights too. Because somebody's coming for their rights too. Some of the people that have even voted for people that have said they're going to take away your rights and you have voted for them to do that and surround themselves with people that have the power to do that. I'm not going to be mad with you forever. I may be mad with you initially. But that passes because I love you and I'm still going to fight for your justice. Amen. Glad to be in a denomination that will take a stand for those things as well. Am I willing to take the risk to get to my goal? Am I? Are we? Are we willing, even if it takes us to our death? Martin Luther King, would you do it even if you knew you were going to get killed? Harvey Milk, would you do it even if you knew you would get killed? Daryl Mitchell, would you do it? Troy Perry, would you do it? Morris Welch, would you do it even if you knew it would kill you? We don't want it to kill anybody. But there's the risk. I'd say, yes, we are willing. So much more. I want to end with this quote from one of my favorites, Bishop Stephen Charleston. I was counting some of my spiritual scars late, uh, recently. You got some of those? I have got quite a few. Like an old veteran of many struggles. I can recall times when my life in the house of faith was not easy. Nothing can hurt quite as bad as the church. The point is, religion can become a full contact sport. People argue. People get frustrated. Some stay. Some leave. If we have never known a conflict in faith, we may not have been as fully engaged as we thought. So I am committed enough to hang in there. Even when the going gets tough. Passion is the lure of love. Hang the price. Amen. Again, thank you for watching our worship message video on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified of other video posts. You can also watch our worship service in its entirety by going to facebook.com slash mccbr. 
You can watch us live on Facebook at 11 a.m. Central every Sunday. Visit our webpage at mccbr.org where you can find our calendar of events as well as other information about our church and our denomination. Like our Facebook page so you can be notified of our other live events. Thank you again, and may you have a blessed week. Whether here and now, or another time, not even height or depth, whether strong or weak, in the face of the future, or the powers that be, you are not separated.